All right, this is going to be a down and dirty guide to installing and configuring the necessary software to create a mod for Fallout 2. The first step is to make a copy of the entire Fallout 2 game folder. This copy is what we're going to be using to make our mod with. If you have a Steam version like I do, right click the game listing in your library, go to Manage and select Browse Local Files. Go up one directory from here, right click your Fallout 2 file, and go to Copy. At this point, make a new empty folder. This folder is where we're going to install all of our Fallout 2 mod stuff. I created one on my D drive. You can create one wherever you feel works best for you. Inside this folder, after selecting copy on our Fallout 2 game directory, right click and go to paste. This will create a copy of Fallout 2 inside our Fallout 2 mod folder. This is the copy of the game we're going to be using to make our mod with. The next step is to download and install all the software necessary to make a Fallout 2 mod. There are four basic programs you'll need that I know of. The BIS mapper, also known as the Black Isle Studios mapper, the Fallout Proto Manager, the Fallout 2 Dat Explorer, and the Fallout S-Fall script editor. This last one is the newest version of S-Fall. It's optional, but I recommend it if you want to take advantage of some of the more advanced scripting options available in the updates. Let's start with the mapper. Installation for the BIS Fallout 2 mapper is very simple. Open the archive and extract the contents to your mod folder. Once it finishes extracting, you're done with the install. Configuration is a little bit more daunting though. Once you've extracted the archive, open the install folder, then open the BIS mapper folder. And if you try to run the mapper with incorrect or missing config settings, an error will pop up telling you it couldn't find load text fonts. To fix this error, find the mapper2.cfg file, right click and edit it with a text editor. Scroll down to the bottom, you'll find four settings that are left blank. Critter patches, critter dat, master patches, and master dat. Each of these are asking for the paths to the critter.dat or master.dat files and their related patches found in the root game folder. To find these files, go to the copy of Fallout 2 that you just created, open it up, and at the top here, you'll find critter.dat, and if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see master.dat. Just copy the path structure from the file browser to critter underscore dat here, and add at the end slash critter.dat. For the master.dat file, right click here, paste, and add slash master.dat. Now the critter patches and master patches are looking for a slightly different path setting. Go back to your game, open your data folder, and copy the path structure from the file browser over to critter patches and master patches. They are exactly the same. You don't have to change anything. Save this config file and get ready to edit the m2res.ini file. If you try to open the mapper now, it will run but look really wonky with weird colors and take over your desktop with an awkward 640 by 480 resolution. It also changes your desktop color depth to 8 bits. To fix these settings, we open the m2res.ini file, right click and go down to edit. First, we change the screen width and screen height settings to match your desktop resolution. I'm using a 1080p monitor, so I would put 1920 by 1080 here. And we change the color bits from 8 bits to 32 bits. This is what most people will be using on their monitors unless you have a really, really old desktop, really old monitor. The original game was made with 8-bit colors, but since most people will be playing with 32-bit palettes thanks to the high-res mod, we may as well have our mod match what is probably the most common color palette in use today. Save the changes, and the mapper should now start up correctly. To test it out, go to File, Open, and at the very top, you should see AR Bridge. This is the that is a barking dog. This is the Arroyo Bridge, one of the early maps in Fallout 2. Yay, the mapper works. If everything looks good, let's move on to the next step. Next, we make a copy of the scripts folder right here. Go back to your Fallout 2 mod folder, right click and paste here. This is the scripts folder we will be using for references as we create new in-game scripts and sequences for our mod for Fallout 2. Finally, go back into the mapper folder and make a shortcut of the mapper2.exe program. Then copy or move that shortcut to a spot where you can easily find it. I'm going to place all of my shortcuts on the desktop for now. You can put them in a folder or on the taskbar as you like. Just be aware that you're going to have about a dozen shortcuts when we're done. Congratulations, the mapper is now fully installed. Next up, we have the Fallout Proto Manager. 
Just like the mapper, extract the contents of the archive to your Fallout 2 mod folder. When that's finished, open the install folder and run the Proto Manager executable. On first run, the configuration settings menu should pop up asking you for the path to the game folder. Open the browse button for the game folder. Find your mod folder, then the folder for the copy of Fallout 2 you made earlier. Click OK. The mod folder location will be automatically filled in, and you can click OK again. This is the Proto Manager. If you take a look at it, you can actually edit some of the settings on many of the items and many of the critters in the game. You can also duplicate items and critters and even create new ones, provided you have the tools to create the art and animations that you'll need. One important note, if you set the game folder incorrectly the first time, you'll have to change both the game folder and the mod folder because the mod folder setting doesn't auto-correct itself for some reason. Congratulations, the Fallout Proto Manager is now fully installed. One last step I always like to do, right click on it, create shortcut, and then move, move or copy that shortcut to a spot where you can get to easily. Next, let's install the Fallout 2 Data Explorer. This one's probably the easiest. Just open the archive and extract the contents to your mod folder. There is no setup involved to it. There isn't any configuration. If you run the program, it will ask you if you want to open or create a new DAT file. Selecting Open will take you to an Explorer window where you can find the copy of Fallout 2 you just made and select the critter.dat or master.dat files inside. For now, just open the master.dat file. This program allows you to extract the contents of these compressed game files for either editing or review. The Data Explorer is only rarely needed, but can be useful in some situations, so I'm including it here in case someone asks. And for the next step, once you've finished installing the Data Explorer, right-click Data Explorer version 1.43, the most recent version, create a shortcut, and copy or move that shortcut to the desktop. Congratulations, that's all you needed to do to install the Fallout 2 Data Explorer, but before we move on, to get the scripts folder we need for the next section, open the Data Explorer we just installed, browse to the master.dat file in your Fallout 2 directory, and open it. Open the scripts folder, and here, find the scripts.lst file. If you press S on the keyboard, it should take you to the S section, and we're just looking for scripts. scripts.lst. Right click on this, and go to extract selected files. Find the copy of Fallout 2 you made earlier for modding and extract the file into Fallout 2 slash data. Click OK. This should create a new scripts folder we're going to need later and give us a copy of the scripts.lst file needed for the scripter. Finally, back in the data explorer, go back up one level and find and open the data folder. Here, we're going to extract all the text files in this folder. Right click, go to view and select list view to make it easier to find them and highlight all of the text files that are here and the vault13.game file. Right click, go down to extract selected files to find the copy of Fallout 2 you made again and find the data folder one more time and select OK. If everything worked correctly, you should have a scripts folder with scripts.lst in it in your Fallout 2 slash data folder and another data folder inside that with all the files you just extracted here. Congratulations, that's all the setup we needed to do. We're now ready to install the scripting program. The last program and probably the most important is the SFall script editor. Just like the others, extract the contents of this archive to your Fallout 2 mod folder. Unlike the others, you have to run the executable you just finished extracting to finish the install. By default, the script editor will be installed directly into the folder you copied the executable to, which in this case is the Fallout 2 mod folder that we created earlier. Click Next. This will add an entry to your start menu if you like one. I'm going to create my own special shortcuts just to keep everything organized. Feel free to install this to your start menu if you would like. Click Next. Click Install. And it's a pretty quick install, and now we're ready to run the editor. Now we can delete the installer. It's archived here if you want to reinstall it later. And once it's finished installing, open the script editor folder and run the program. On first run, a settings menu will pop up, but if this isn't the first time the program has been run, you can select options and go down to settings to get the same menu to pop up here. Uncheck the box marked don't use compiling path. 
and change the output scripts folder by clicking the little icon that says change folder right there. Browse to your modded Fallout 2 game folder, find data slash scripts underneath there and click OK. This will set our copy of Fallout 2 as the default location to compile scripts to in the editor, making it much easier to test scripts in game. Next, change the folder for the headers file by clicking its browse folder button. Now we need to find the scripts folder we copied much earlier, not the one we just created with the data explorer. Go to your Fallout 2 mod, find the scripts folder there that we copied from the mapper, and scroll down until you find the headers folder inside that. Click OK. The location of the scripts.h file should be automatically filled in. Congratulations, the SFall script editor is now installed and ready to run. Once you're finished installing the SFall script editor, right-click it and go down to Create Shortcut and copy or move that shortcut to wherever it is you're organizing your shortcuts at. Oh man, you thought we were done there? Not yet. Now we have to make a bunch of shortcuts to game files we'll need to edit as we make new stuff for our mod. Start by opening the scripts folder we copied from the mapper earlier and find the headers folder located inside that. And here, find command.h. The quickest way for me to do this is to right click the file we're gonna make a shortcut to, come over here and create a shortcut right here on the desktop. If you want to create a shortcut in the folder and copy move it like we were doing earlier, that's just fine too. Either way, we're just going to make shortcuts to a bunch of these files here. So the first one is command.h. Next, find creatorpid.h, which is right here. Create a shortcut for this one. Next, find define.h. Create a shortcut for define.h here. Next, find global.h. Scroll down a little bit. Global.h. Right click and create a shortcut here. Uh, and finally, in this folder, find scripts.h, which is all the way down in the S section. Scripts.h, right click and create a shortcut here. Okay, we're not done yet. Remember that scripts.lst we extracted from the master.dat earlier? Open the Fallout 2 game you're going to mod, go to data, go to your scripts folder here, and make a shortcut of the scripts.lst file in your shortcut folder. Finally, we do the same thing to the vault13.game file we extracted earlier, which should be found in the Fallout 2 slash data slash data folder. Right click and create a shortcut here. Congratulations, you should be able to start making it a mod now. One final thing you should probably do if you really want to make an impressive mod, update the version of SFall installed with your copy of Fallout 2. The digital versions of Fallout 2 from Steam or GOG will have version 3.2 of Sfall pre-installed with them. And if you have the Bethesda.net version, it will have version 2.9 of Sfall pre-installed with it. If you have a vintage CD copy you're installing it from, I recommend checking out my video explaining how to fully update and install a high-res mod. If you haven't done that already, link will be in the description and it will probably pop up right in the corner here if I can get that set up correctly. I'm using a Steam copy of Fallout 2, but the steps to update Sfall are the same for all versions. Download the latest version of Sfall, link in the description. As of this recording, the most recent version is Sfall version 4.2.6. I have my copy right here. Open the archive and extract the contents to the base Fallout 2 game folder that you're going to be modding. Right in here. Click yes to merge all documents and then click yes to overwrite the old files. And congratulations, you've just updated Sfall. At this point, you're ready to make a fully updated mod for Fallout 2. Okay guys, that's all I've got for this starter video. I'm planning a whole series of these on modding Fallout 2 since I'm actually streaming my mod making with the help of Navarro. And thank you, Navarro. This video was based on your script and help during stream. There is no way I could have made it without your help. If you want some more Fallout 2 stuff, check out my other original Fallout vids covering the original game and several mods, and my personal favorite, the Fallout Glitch series, which I am slowly adding to as I continue to edit videos together. Thank you everybody, have fun playing Fallout 2, and good luck with your mods.